Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. And my sincere apologies to all of you for my day off yesterday as I had some important business to take care of. But here, we have to recalibrate and discuss all the important dominoes falling in a synchronistic manner towards XRP's full-fledged new all-time high bull run. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse released a statement talking about how Ripple's 3-0 and against the SEC, that on the heels of the case dismissal, and also the Bitcoin ETF news possibly breaking any given day. We saw massive shorts get liquidated off the news of Cointelegraph faking a Bitcoin being ETF being passed. And Gary Gensler is over here discussing a change of tune in regards to crypto. Every single one of us knows that a Bitcoin ETF approval is inevitable. I think it'll likely take place within the coming months. But in the meantime, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse breaks down the important steps that Ripple has been taking to make itself a multi-trillion dollar company into the future and beyond. Brad Garlinghouse stated he expects $10 trillion to come to the XRP ledger from the custody digital asset market. And I expect the price of XRP to be much higher by then. But guys, this is what I'm going to add as well. Custodianship has been a big limitation in regards to the crypto market. Custodianship is the reason why we're not at $10 trillion. Once we get regulations and trusted custodians in the space to custody your crypto. Oh, baby. The sky will truly be the limit. And Ripple, with the acquisition of Medico, is positioning itself to be a leader, not just for XRP adoption, not just in the digital asset space, but in custodianship as well. The, the macro environment around custody digital assets uh, is expected to be close to $10 trillion by the year 2030. And it, Inevitably, uh, people are going to need a place to store those assets and uh, safe, secure, and they're going to need to be able to transfer them as well, having good on and off ramps, uh, even the, the a tokenization engine, some of the work Ripple is doing around central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. So we think the, there's a lot of pieces that uh, come together. And we already had, and I remember when you and I first spoke, uh, you know, I remember being on a, a call with one of the largest top 10 banks in the world and a, a, com a bank Ripple was already working with. And they were asking us about, could we help them with their custody? This is prior to the medical acquisition. And we weren't in a position to do that. And so when I think about that synergy, the ability to say to that existing Ripple customer, hey, you know, here's a, a best in class, you know, going head to head, time to time again and winning uh, on the custody uh, level, you know, to be able to bring that product to them, I think is a great opportunity for the two companies together. So Now guys, that's an important bombshell. Brad Garlinghouse lets you into the growing pains of Ripple the company and how back in the day they did not have a solution to a major problem that institutions had. Ripple listened. Ripple adapted. And now they have an in-house product and custodian solution to help their customers. Guys, after this case is over, XRP adoption is inevitable. This case is ended. We have clarity. And the former head of the CFTC lets us know that regulators need to understand that they can't stop technology. This case is over. And XRP is going to lead from the front this next cycle. I 110% believe that. And I'll also add, guys, with regulations will come a seismic shift in the amount of money and the type of money that we can make in this space.
Every agenda is pointing to the XRP and CBDC endgame. And I can't stress that enough. Regulators need to understand that they can't stop technology. Mm -hmm. This is going to happen. It's kind of like a river. You can help change and direct its course, but you can't stop it. So you can focus on directing it to make sure there's consumer protection, financial stability risk are addressed, and all sorts of other regulatory objectives, but it's critical that regulators are proactive and not reactive. Uh, enforcement is no substitute for rulemaking mm -hmm. in terms of providing guidance to the industry. And then I would also say that regulators need to understand that the real key is to make sure that similar risk are regulated similarly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the question that you ask about traditional finance versus the new finance. If the risk are very similar, mm -hmm. then you should try to ensure that they're dealt mm -hmm. with similarly so you don't have regulatory arbitrage. Mm -hmm. um, but the real key, I think, is making sure that, that you, you are technologically neutral as a regulator and, and you have certain regulatory objectives, um, but otherwise you, you let the industry continue to innovate. Now, I absolutely loved what he had to say right there in regards to innovation and regulation, because we have yet another episode of deciphering the lizard talk from my favorite reptilian, Christine Lagarde. Oh, Madame Lagarde. She's really peacocking right now. As she states, we need to prepare our currency for the future. While we haven't yet decided whether to issue a digital euro, we are getting ready. We envisage a digital euro as a digital form of cash that can be used for all digital payments, coexisting with physical cash, leaving no one behind. And guys, this November, they will start laying out the foundation for the possible issuance of a digital euro. Madame Lagarde, one of the most powerful reptilians in the world, my friends, is letting every single one of you know that the events that I've been warning about happening in November will have yet another domino falling at the exact same time. The digital euro is starting its go live process this month as well, on top of the upgrades to Swift and ISO 20022. And people keep trying to tell me this is random. People keep trying to warn me that it's clickbait. People keep trying to tell me it won't happen. Watch from the sideline as everything being discussed happens in a coordinated manner and you got left behind. Because this ain't gonna stop. It's only gonna accelerate more and more every single day. The digital euro is on the move. Yesterday, the governing council of the ECB approved the opening of the preparation phase. It will be a journey, and we will walk the journey together with the legislator. All European institutions will be involved to make sure that Europe is equipped with the currency of the future. Cash is here to stay. You will have all options, cash and digital cash. So what does it mean for you? For consumers, it would be free and easy to use everywhere in the Euro area. All of that, of course, is subject to the legislative process. Cash or digital, the choice will be yours. Your euro, your choice. Now guys, what we really need to hammer home here is the fact that Christine Lagarde is actually a regulator and a banker that is embracing this technological innovation as opposed to trying to regulate it out of existence. You see, these reptilians, they genuinely like having most of their puppets executing the normal status quo plan. But then they choose a specific one to come to the forefront and advance the next stage of their agenda. Christine Lagarde was the chosen one to advance the next stage of the financial system into the digital central bank digital currency age, and she did so from Europe. The European Central Bank is going digital, and there's absolutely nothing we could do to stop it 
other than embrace it, other than put our chess pieces in place to profit from it. And all of you better recognize where we're going. They're looking for carbon credit solutions. They're looking for sustainability and climate change solutions. And yet again, Ripple fits their agenda, has molded to the elites, and is offering that and advertises the fact that they're offering that every single day. Bitcoin is slow and expensive and not environmentally friendly. Ripple and XRP are actively looking to reduce carbon emissions, actively working on climate and sustainability. And here, I'm going to cap off this video for today by showing you all the strides Ripple has done to advance this agenda so that all of you can feel confident that we will profit from the work they've been doing. Ladies and gentlemen, stay the course. We will become the new 1%. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable ball here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. It's both a concerning time and an exciting time in combating climate change. Without the carbon markets, we don't hit our targets in 2030. We need to start thinking about how to invest in projects going forward that are going to remove carbon significantly. We've been working on this issue for more than 40 years, always in collaboration with businesses and industries because we believe that in the end, it's the market economy that is going to put in place the solutions for a sustainable energy future. One of the major challenges that we're facing is how do you prove or certify that a carbon project is actually sequestering carbon and storing it? And how do you make sure that there is authenticity in these carbon projects? How do you know that the carbon credit you're purchasing hasn't been sold before? How do you know that it's um, actually high quality? That transparency and verifiability is so much easier on blockchain. Over the past year, we've been working with climate-focused fintechs and carbon removal companies to put their carbon removal inventory onto the XRP ledger. It was very important that the protocol we work with, that they are recognized by corporations, uh, that's a clean chain and that there's fast transactions possible. Both Ripple and XRPL have focused recently on how do you mitigate climate, how do we start creating the infrastructure and the tools to allow a lot of this change to happen. There's so many ways to generate carbon reductions from you know, planting a new forest to planting mangroves to direct air capture and burying. This ledger enables us to preserve the unique identity of what we do. The good news is we see lots of new initiatives emerging that further the transparency, the liquidity, and the depth of the carbon markets. To build the future, you have to innovate, and blockchain is the most innovative tool that we have. I think it's a super exciting time to be in the carbon capture and transformation space. For the first time, I guess, in human history, we have the tools.